Hi, I'm Frank and welcome to my wood turning channel. This week I'm going to take a, a burl that I rough turned quite a few years ago and uh, try to finish turn it. Now it's got a kind of a very weak area right here that I need to put some kind of epoxy in. The bark here penetrates all the way through and then of course there's a hole here all the way through as well. And I think I'm going to try to fill that and the bark area with a bit of epoxy just to uh, just to make it uh, fully fully a little bit more functional because then there'll be a bowl area here. Yeah, so let's see how we make out. The first thing I have to do is uh, get the bark areas all cleaned out. And I'm just using this wire brush thing that installs in the drill. And uh, yeah, clean up those areas so that the epoxy has a good chance of uh, adhering to the wood. For this piece I'm taping up the inside because I'm going to do my epoxy pours all on the outside. So I'm just going to use masking tape and put a little bit of hot melt glue around it just to make sure it doesn't leak outside the masking tape. And this seems to work okay. Now on the outside I'm just going to create these little dams using some hot melt glue and some really thick uh, plastic sheeting. Now I use the hot melt glue that has a longer set time. It's used more for woodworking. That way it'll uh, I can put on a large amount and it'll uh, adhere to the plastic. Well now I've got all three of the little dams built up. So all I have to do is mix up some epoxy and pour it in now. I'm going to go with a blue color and I'm just going to use just the regular epoxy, not the deep cast. Because my voids aren't particularly thick or deep. So that should be fine for, for this purpose. I'm just pouring this in nice and slow just to make sure I don't get a lot of uh, leakage outside these little dam areas I've built. Well it looks like that worked out pretty good. There's no leakage on the outside and I just hope there's no leakage on the inside. 
We'll see you in 24 hours. There was just a little bit of leakage on the inside, but not too bad. Yeah, just a little bit of the epoxy came through, and I can live with that pretty easily. Boy, this tape and glue is really tough to get off. I just struggled with this, but later I found that if I just put some methyl alcohol or any kind of alcohol on it, the glue just comes right off much easier. There's just a few holes on the inside that didn't get filled in, so I'm just going to use some medium CA glue, mix in the blue, and hopefully that'll fix up those little areas on the inside where I don't want to do a complicated epoxy pour in there. Well, it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that uh, CA glue. Now it's time to get this on the lathe and uh, start forming the outside surface. I'm going to start with just a bowl gouge and see how that cuts the epoxy. I mean, if that works fine, I'd rather use a bowl gouge than a, than a scraper or a carbide. So we'll see how that works. I know it dulls the tool quite quickly, but I've got a few tools. I'll just interchange them or sharpen them as I need to. This gouge is actually working pretty good. I don't think I've had to really use the carbide scraper at all. If you, oh by the way, if you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. These outside wing areas are always a challenge. They're like little helicopter wings flying around there. So sometimes I try a bit of a push cut and sometimes I try a little bit of a pull cut like I'm doing now just to see what's the best way to get the best finish I can off of the uh, surfaces. In this transition area, I'm going to use this uh, bottoming bowl gouge to see if that will work a little better to get these this transition area and the flat. Just having a little bit of trouble getting a good finish there. Well that worked out pretty good and the surface has a few little ridges so I'm just going to use this negative rake scraper to take off those little ridges. And I'm just going to use it flat on the tool rest because it's an intermittent cut.
Here I'm actually just going to try the easy wood carbide cutter. And just in this little area here, it seems to do not too bad of a job to smooth out all the little ridges. Well, the bottom is all done. Now it's time to do the, uh, the top or the inside surface of this piece. I'm using just the bowl gouge again to do the final cuts here and that seems to give me a pretty good surface finish. I'm going nice and slow, taking a minimal amount off and a nice sharp tool. Yeah, I've got a good surface. I'm happy with that. Now while I enter the inside of the bowl, it's basically like just turning a regular bowl. Nice smooth cuts, trying to ride the bevel really well. And then if I have any areas where I see any flaws or little lines, I'm just using this negative rake scraper just to take those little ridges out. Just minimizes the amount of sanding I have to do later. By the way, if you didn't notice, I'm wearing a face mask respirator system that uh, protects my face from all the shavings and protects my lungs. And I'm also actually wearing some earplugs here because, because the tool makes a lot of noise when it makes the cuts. So it's good to protect both your ears and your lungs. Oh, I just can't say enough about these Andre Martel calipers. They're really, really good for uh, getting your thickness, especially near the bottom of the bowl. I'm just roughing out the bottom and then I do my finished cuts with a bottoming bowl gouge. That always works a little bit better across the bottom surface of bowls. And again, I'll just refine the uh, surface a little bit, getting rid of some lines with my negative rake scraper. And I just try to minimize that. I don't want to overuse that. Now with the sanding, I have to do it stationary like this for the wings. And then I will uh, unlock it and uh, rotate it to do the inner part. This piece is actually a commissioned piece. 
the, and it's supposed to be dyed kind of a blue turquoise color. So this is what I've chosen and I've diluted the color a little bit so it doesn't go on too strongly the first time. So I will apply it, let it dry and then sand it to a finer grit and then reapply another coat. Sometimes I do this two or three times, sometimes just twice. Now that the outside is all done, I'm going to just uh, reverse it and put it on a jam chuck and remove the base. I like to leave my base as natural wood colored. I don't, want to, I don't want the base to be blue like the rest of the piece. This is just so people can see what the real color of the wood looks like. And I'm just going to finish this off with my typical general salad bowl finish. I use the brush just to get the bark areas. And then I uh, just use a kitchen paper to uh, apply the finish to all the surfaces and then wipe it off very quickly after I put it on.